Hey everybody, Jonathan Mark Mendes, Painted Love, and welcome to today's studio session. I think this is the sixth studio session in the series. We've done all sorts from dark waxing, um, dry brushing, some of the basic core techniques that I use over some of my painted projects. Um, if you're a new painter, these will be really helpful for you. They're in a series of, so if you need to find the other ones, it might be easy for you to jump over to my YouTube channel. Um, subscribe and then you'll get um, and press the little bell and you'll get notifications for when the next studio session is on. Alternatively, stay with me here. Obviously, you all know that this is going live every Wednesday, so you can see uh, all of the lives are further down on the feed on my f uh, Facebook page. Um, so if you need to find some of those studio sessions, they're there. Right, today's studio session is going to be quite a long one, so grab a cup of tea. Or if you can't stay with me on the live, again, back to YouTube or on the page, um, come back later. It's going to be about half an hour long, I think, or maybe even longer because there's a lot to get through. And I've chosen to do on today's studio session um, decoupage. Now, there's lots of different ways of decoupage. There's amazing products out there, transfers, um, IOD, um, lots of other rice paper transfers. There's many um, different ways of doing decoupage. But I'm gonna show you, because it's the way I started, and I'm, gonna, I'm reeling them all back to my beginnings, I'm gonna show you um, napkin decoupage. Um, it's something that I love doing and I think you can use lots of different styles of napkin and amalgamate them together. So you'll end up with um, something uniquely yours. Um, a few little techniques in there just to, um, again, demystify um, some of um, the, the way to do. I'm gonna try and simplify it as much as I can. It's my way, it's not the same way as everybody else. I like quick and easy and good results quickly. So um, we, without further ado, we'll, we'll head over to the, um, to the table to see some of the products that I've put out. I might have forgotten some of them, I don't know, but I'll grab them as we go along. But let's take a look at what we've got to um, use. And I'll, we need to talk about some of the materials anyway. So it might take a few minutes to go through all of the materials um, whilst I, kind of remove this camera and move it to a close-up area. So let's go over to um, the overhead cam. Okay guys, um, you'll be seeing on the table now the usual, um, a door, a cupboard door. This is from a kitchen, so we're gonna work on that today. This could be your piece of furniture. As you can see, I've pre-prepped the, uh, the door with chalk paint or a paint of your choice. Um, at one minute, I will be with you one second, let me just rig up this other camera um, and then I can come down and talk to you with my hands. Okay, right, let's go. So, you are there, aren't you? Yeah, you are. Um, so what you can see here, cupboard door. This has been chalk paint, a neutral colour. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, I've also got with me um, I've got my water spray, trusty water spray, in case we need that later for watering down some of the glue. Um, I've got a bowl to, um, and, a, and a nice brush. Oops. Seems we was talking brushes before. This is my like laying off brush. It's fine. It's thin on the edge. So that's a good brush for applying, and it's quite broad. It'll allow you to apply glue fairly rapidly and quickly to get it, uh, more glue on quicker. Um, so the bowl, that will be the glue. This is the glue I'm using. I'm in the UK. If you're in the UK, you'll know this PVA glue. I think it's written back to front on this, but PVA glue. Um, other glues that will work, um, Mod Podge. Uh, Annie Sloan does a decoupage medium. Um, there is Elms Craft Glue. Kids craft glue, basically, white glue that dries transparent. You'll all know what that is um, and, and where to get that from. So any of those will do exactly what I'm doing. I buy this in the uh, large container because I use a lot of it, um, not just for this, for many other projects, even in the house, um, things when we're decorating. So I've always got that in. Also, you'll need some um, cling film. In the UK, we call this cling film. In 
so many other countries it's named different things. Cling wrap, um, what else? You'll all tell me, I'm sure you'll list all of wherever you are, just actually pop them up on, on the screen, what you call it. Basically it's for sealing food. Um, cling wrap, I don't know what it's, or, or, um, lots of different names for this, but this is fine cling wrap. So that, that's gonna be useful to us um, and you'll see later down the line. And of course, you will need your napkins. So I have, I've got this basket full of different napkins. I have my favorites and um, my main favorite, I'll show you in a moment, but there's all sorts. I'm gonna bring these up. They've all, thing is about napkins, some of them are patterned throughout the full napkin when you open it. So this is one, which is quite nice. Little vintage roses. Generally, I go for flowers because I like flowers. Um, so that's one. These ones are quite handy. This is um, a napkin full of ivy leaves. So they're always really good if you're doing flowers so you can add in flowers. Um, what else have I got in here? All sorts. This is another nice one, a, a cherry blossom. So you can see, I've generally, I pick up the ones with flowers. Um, I keep the two out that I think I'm gonna use. This is absolutely beautiful. I don't know if anyone remembers me decoupaging my tiles in my previous property. I used, um, I wanted to kind of create that blue and white tile and this is the one that I use for it and it's gorgeous. It's like a, literally, and I um, crackle a over the top and sealed them in and I used all the little trim around the edge on each tile so I could take the individual elements out and put them on the tiles, it looked absolutely sublime. So that's a gorgeous tile. And this is another one of my favorites, these vintage roses. These look hand painted. The only problem with this one is, you'll get some napkins that are like this. Look how it repeats, it's like a mirror image in four ways. But nevertheless, you can take the individual elements out and move these around and add paint too, to fill in the missing blanks. Like you could add your own leaf inside or even potentially you know from one of the other napkins you might find a napkin with leaves that you can go over so there's all sorts vintage roses a long time ago many years ago i used this one which is um lovely i love that green and white gorgeous so there's a few napkins you can see the are all florals but if you can pick up any napkins with anything that's not so much a floral it's kind of a design so you can use designs on different things um, so lots of different styles. I'm just gonna use two, my favorite, and many of you that have followed my work over the time, you will have seen this napkin used um, a lot. And if you're into furniture painting or decoupage, everybody will know this one. It, it's just a classic, it's fabulous. Um, if anybody wants to find this, I think if you, I buy mine on eBay, if you put V&A um, floral napkin, I think this is a v &A, a pattern from the Victoria and Albert Museum, I think. But I've always put v &A floral napkin and this is what comes up. So, um, you can see how wonderful this is. And, and we're gonna deconstruct this and use different elements in a moment. So, then you'll see how I like to make um, the napkin look very different to how it is from the packet. So I'm gonna, we're gonna move on to how to prepare the napkin ready for decoupage. It's gonna be a little bit strange because I'm gonna have to flip you to another camera and I think I'm gonna try and get you over my shoulder so you can see really close up. So let's give it a go. Okay guys, I'm gonna shuffle around a little bit. Excuse me, bring the chair over. Right. I'm, I'm coming closer because it needs to be really close up. So, I'm gonna use the V&A. Let's take one out. Um, you're not gonna see me in a moment. So, we're gonna open this up to get the perfect edge to the napkin before we um, apply to the surface. I'm gonna bring this down now. You're gonna see my lap. I think it's best that I come can we see guys I can't see much of you here we go so you could cut round this with a pair of scissors but the thing is about cutting round the edge you're gonna give yourself a very definite edge and the best way that I know to do this would be to 
fray the edge. So we're gonna go in, fingers and thumbs, excuse the fingers, because I've got paint all over them, and we're gonna prise. Can you see how that, two, my two fingers, two thumbs, and I'm separating. So I'm shredding the paper. I'm gonna keep very close to the edge of the pattern, and I'm going round. I don't know if you can see that, I'm gonna get really, really close. Shredding, but I'm just following the pattern. It doesn't matter whether I am getting this too neat, but shred. Can you see how that is? It's all shredded. And you just work your way around the pattern. Slowly, slowly does it. Hoping the camera's focusing for you pretty good because as I move, it'll go out of focus. So just take your time over going round the design. Keep on shredding away. And it just, what, what you can see is, if I get really close, take this edge off. Can you see you've got this irregular shredded edge all the way around? It doesn't have to be too close. It can be close or it can be a little bit further away. Whatever you want, just make sure these edges are all shredded all the way around the napkin. Like this. Taken away. Sometimes, I mean, there I've just nipped a bit of that rose. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, because we're going to do a whole lot of interesting things later on down the line once we've got um, the napkin on. So I would call this sort of shredding the napkin, dividing the edges away from. Now there's a, a, a big bit here that I am going to go into. It's kind of thin on the edge. I'm gonna take that little center part out, keep to the edges, taking my time. So let's call this shredding around the edge. Like I said, you could use a pair of scissors, but in my opinion, never turns out as good. So there we go. I don't know if we can see that. Where are we on camera? The light's not so good, is it? So. That's the edge. If I put my hand there, you can see shredded around the edge. Um, right, I'm gonna move the camera back up. Back to me. Hi guys. So shred around the edge. Right, I've already prepared some over there so we can move on almost straight away. The other interesting thing about um, napkins, majority of them are three ply. Um, so there is three thin layers. The top layer which is printed, another white layer, and then another white layer. Sometimes there's only two, depending on the quality. Most of these really good designs are three ply. So, I'm gonna show you on this one, they're pre-done. Once I've gone all the way around the design, what we're gonna do is remove them. The best way that I can do, tell you how to do this is just lick your finger and then pince the, the napkin if both fingers are a little bit damp, what you find is it, it will just come freely away. Usually it's the first layer underneath that'll come away. And you can slowly, slowly just peel the two away from each other. So that's the bottom layer. I know it's the bottom layer because it's pure white. Where it's perforated, it becomes a little bit more tougher to get off. So again, take your time. This is all in the prep of your napkin. So that's one layer. So you can use this, put this to one side, you can use that to clean up any glue blobs later. Right, one more time. We're gonna do it again. My fingers are a little bit tacky and I'm just gonna press it down in between, in between my fingers and just keep on tapping it. Eventually, not enough, there you go. That's the best way. You can blow it a little bit and then you'll get a clear divide. Come on you. <laughs> you can see my concentration. Here we go. There we go. Once you've got it, gently, gently does it. I've got it, I've got it guys. 
There we go, look. Can we see? I'm gonna, the light again, it's not very good. Let's go here. Can you see that? Maybe I'm too close to the camera. There we go, look. That's, you can see there's a very thin layer on top. Slowly does it. The white layer comes off. So three ply, gently does it. Be very gently around the edges where you've um, teased, teased away around the edges because that might cause a discrepancy. You might rip through your design. But that's what you need to do. Can you see? Two halves. Um, like I said, where it's perforated on the edge, little pimples, it's kind of a little bit tougher to free up. So I'm just going to do this really quick now. I'm not going to worry about the... That's it. It's gone. So that's what you're left with. Very transparent, thin, 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 thin. That, obviously, you'd go around all the way around the edges, but that would be your prepared napkin. So that's good to go, ready for decoupaging. Right, now let's go back to the overhead camera and we'll talk about placement. So let's flip you back. So as you can see with this pattern, um, it's, it's beautiful, it's in, it's in a round. And if you've got a small stool and you've, if you've got this pattern, it looks amazing on a small round stool on the surface on the top. But I wanna talk about placement and how we can make this napkin not look like the design it was meant to be and adding a few other styles with it to try and change the pattern. So um, I don't want it to be as formal as in the center, although you might wanna to choose to do that way. Sometimes I've done decoupage where I've done patterns that, you know, let's just say um, it was a piece of a small bedside and I've done a mirror image pattern going either side and kept the paintwork through the middle, which looks amazing. So you could layer up, you know, these designs all the way down one side and all the way down another side, which looks amazing. Um, if you want to do it more organically, we can have, you know, do corner to corner. Think about placement on the piece of furniture and where it's going to sit and where your paintwork's going to sit. Now that's very tough for me to teach you that. That is all up to you and your choices, I suppose. Um, what I can give you is the basis of ideas. Um, and the trick is to try and make things look bold because for when you're doing furniture, if it's a big piece of furniture, little bits here and there don't look good. Not unless it is something like this pattern, um, which is, I mean, I could put the border around the edge and then a, a, a pattern in the middle and it probably, or maybe the border around this edge, around the aperture, I could use, uh, let's talk about this. So I could take one of these elements, maybe this element here, um, and apply that to the center of here if I wanted a more formal pattern and then take all of this sort of edge, this beautiful patterned edge, and apply that to maybe around this aperture. So that would be quite interesting on, on this design. But when it's flowers, I kind of think it just looks better organic in its flow. So we're gonna try and start by doing that. Let's move some of these out of the way. And um, the way, I mean, with this pattern as well, you've got I always see this is this pattern, it's got two halves of two colours. This side's kind of dark and plummy, which is gorgeous. And this side is kind of got lots of warm, scandy colours. It's almost a sort of like vintage rose. So you've got two halves of two colours on this napkin. And I quite often rip this through the centre and separate the two and use them in two different ways. So how I'm going to work this is... Oh, let's just go back, uh, reel back one one other place that's really important about decoupage and I've missed it out so we I've jumped ahead of myself and we'll come back to this the base coat of your paintwork does need to be light you could not paint this black and apply this and you would you wouldn't see it as sharp as the colors that you see here the black would shine through and you would lose some of your pattern 
So it does show up in a quite interesting way, but not as cl the clarity is not good. Um, so please don't try and think that you can just paint a piece of furniture and have black or a dark, a dark blue or a dark green. You probably would need to put in some lighter tones. The birds are going crazy outside. The, uh, some lighter tones where you're going to place. So if we were going to place this here, I'd maybe do a, a, a smoky blend with your dark here and then blend this and know that you're going to place it there and then maybe fill in afterwards. We're going to show, I'm going to show you some of the, uh, the way that I blend afterwards um, at the end. So yeah, be very careful and mindful that you can't take apart. You need a blank, a blank background. This is just an off uh, white sort of a country grey colour it's just an off-white um, pales all the pales will do really wonderful I kind of like to match up almost to the, the background of the napkin which this is kind of like a creamy colour so this has got a little bit of warmth to it if that makes sense right so how I'm gonna work this I'm gonna perhaps do corner to corner so I'm gonna apply this to this corner just here um, and then maybe take some of what patterns and the colours, the plummy colours up here, uh, like so. So all I'm going to do is I'm kind of pl playing around with it on the surface now. Um, also, I want to show you this as well. I've got this other napkin. I haven't showed you this one yet. A another gorgeous napkin. I'm going to use two. This is stunning. Um, the artist's name is on it, but I can't read it. And I should credit him, really, because, or her, sorry, whoever you are, I'm, it could be female, I'm not sure. Don't give me that. But the artist has done an amazing job of this beautiful thing. But what I like this napkin for, I'm gonna lay it flat, it's a bucket with ivy, and I'm gonna use, I'm not gonna use the bucket part, I'm just gonna use this, which I've already pre-done. Again, this needs separating, so I'll do that again, whilst we're on the camera with you. Um, from this angle, look, that's one layer. So we don't need that. And again, once you get the hang of this, it's quick. There's the other layer. So pre, it's been pre-cut round, shredded. I'm gonna like that word, it's a new word, shredded. Um, like so. So I've got that and there's lots of different th elements in here that I can use with that one if that makes sense. So I'm looking at this, I'm thinking this is where I'm gonna place it. Um, ordinarily, because I want it to come quite far over, I probably might pre-cut down the sides on this one, ready to use it in a different area. Um, or shall we take some off? We'll take some off maybe, to begin with. We might just take this bottom half off here. So I will go around. I know that I'm gonna use, again, shredded um, we're gonna go around the flower keeping some of it almost in a straight line no rhyme or reason to this maybe go through that leaf keep the dark stuff straight down there so that's a little element we can use somewhere else um, and we maybe just use that in that corner and then see I've got a corner here, I'm not gonna worry about that. I can take some of this leaf and apply it over there, which we'll do. And then this element, we'll take another one of these and we'll apply it up there and maybe add it somewhere else along the top. So without further ado, let's add this napkin to the surface. This is unfinished, it's just chalk paint. Um, let's tip some glue into the bowl, ready to go. Pop that in there. I think Mr. M has just arrived back. So you may hear the car pulling into the driveway. Yeah, he's home. So what we're gonna do is glue in the bowl. Again, the brush is nice and thin. And I've worked out more or less where I'm gonna put it. So I'm gonna help myself by just scoring there and there. And that's kind of giving me a layout of where I've put two little score marks for this corner so I know that's where it's gonna be. And I'm gonna just move it to one side and I've kind of imagined where it is. You could put little pencil marks so you know where to go up to. But again, it's me, risk it for a biscuit. We're just gonna apply the glue to the surface, making sure we get in all of the details. 
The reason I'm using my laying off brush for the gluing on this, it's quite fine and it's great for spreading. So you want only a thin coat of glue on the surface. I can see Mr. M is that way, he's smiling at me. Um, say hello, Mr. M, you're on a live. Oh, yeah. Ah, there he is. He's been shopping. So I'm just applying the glue in a nice thin. Um, give him a thumbs up. Put your thumbs on the camera. Say hello. Just put your thumbs up like that. There you go. Fist pump. Yeah, well done. So a thin coat of glue to the surface. And then and I'm spreading, spreading, spreading. I don't want it to be thick and gloopy. Too much glue and you're getting a sticky mess. So I'm making sure I'm getting all of these edges, around these edges, into the detail, like so. Move that out of the way. Um, move some of these out of the way so I can see what I've got and where I'm working. I am making a hot mess. This needs to be there. Right, so now I'm gonna go back, and this is a one-time only thing. I'm just going to drop this into place. You do kind of need to make sure some of these creases are out. Um, and it is one of those things, just dropping into place, one time only. I'm stretching and dropping. Light, light fingers, just light fingers. You don't get many times at touching this. Now, this is the bit where you will not be able to put your fingers on that because as this glue soaks through, you can slightly stretch, only a little bit, um, just tapping, you've got to tap, but any too much friction with your fingers now and you'll go straight through that. It's, the napkin's so thin, it will lose, um, it'll, it'll literally, your fingers will go through. So don't try and do that. So this is where the cling wrap, I'm sure you'll all listed different names for this stuff, for whatever country, because it's, it's named different in every country. Every country I've ever been to, they call it something different. Um, Right, and I'm going to overlay this cling wrap over the top, and I've got perforated, so I can just rip this off, it's really easy. I bought this on eBay as well. Um, it's really easy just to lay on the top. And then, you can now touch this, and you can spread from the centre out, you can push outwards, kind of go into the deepest crevice first, and push outwards. Um, you may get little frays around the edges, but that's all part of it, it'll look beautiful. Into those detailed areas and push down with your fingers and, and kind of work outwards, center outwards, if that makes sense. And move that out of the way. Now, another thing I like to do, just to help, you can take another, another piece of cling wrap, like that, and you can ball that up, and that you can kind of push into the crevices. And that kind of does it in a softer way. It's not like, that's it. It kind of, you can get into those grooves with it. The rest of it you'll do with your fingers. I like to do it with my fingers because I can spread, I can see where it's going. I'm looking all the time. I'm looking through, I'm gonna bring it closer to you. Um, all the time, I'm looking through. Can we see? I'll tilt it that way, you might see better. All the time I'm looking through the cling wrap to see where there's a lump and a bump, and I'm smoothing that down, like so, and round the edges. Right, let's deal. Can you see this corner? Um, you maybe can't sit on the camera, I'll bring it closer to you. I've got a bit where there's no pattern. Can you see the corner? It, it, you could leave it like that, I'm sure it'll look great. We can change that with paint. But, it seems that I've got right here, right now, a little bit of overhang with a leaf on it, I can pick this up and I can add a bit more glue because I think it might have dried out a little bit. Just gently does it over there. I can add a leaf. I can literally go like that over the top of that flower and fill that bit back in. So the napkin goes back down and now I've created a leafy corner. So I can overlap. I've tried to what I'd like to do is try and overlap with a darker colour. So the darker colour of the leaf is overlapping over the, the light surface in this corner. Um, and that makes a big difference. If you do it the other way around, it does work, but you can kind of tell a little bit it's got an overlap. 
So that's that. All of these other bits on the side, I can now remove and, and use for any places that I might have lost later. Um, sometimes you lose a bit on the edge. Sometimes you lose a bit as you've gone around the corner. So you can fill in some of that edge, leading edge there, if you want to. Um, right, now, whilst this cling wrap is on, and I'm gonna, this is, I've used too much. I'm gonna add this over here because there's glue here right now. I don't want anything to get stuck. So this is a good way of doing this. You can then work out which is your next piece to go on. So I'm gonna use a little piece of this ivy. I'm gonna extend the pattern. Or, where is the other piece? I don't know where I've put that. I don't know where I've put it. That's not it, has it gone over? Oh, it's gone over, one minute guys. Here it is. So I could extend the pattern further along, which I'm gonna do, I think. I'm gonna remove this. So, now I've got this cling wrap here, I can see through it and I can decide where this is gonna look best as I spread this pattern along. And I think we've got a green leaf here and a green leaf here. So that'll be a good as an overlap because you're not going to see so much. And then this dark flower here, I'm going to spread this along, I think, like so. And make my pattern longer. So now I know where it's going to be. I can kind of just pull that to one side, leave it next to it, remove this cling wrap. I will need to apply some more glue and this cling wrap here. And I'm pulling away from the previous design lightly because you can pick up the pattern and, and distort it. So you have to be careful because this is drying quite quick. It's chalk paint so it's absorbent, like so. And then I'm gonna carefully again, kind of work out where we add it. I'm gonna go right there and drop it in and spread it out. Light, light fingers. And I'm going to reverse this upside down so I can get back on top of that. That's it. Now I can smooth back in. So that's adding the next part of the pattern along. You will get through quite a bit of cling wrap doing this. So once you've kind of got it on, it's a bit sticky because I flipped it over. I'm going to peel back. And it's pretty good anyway, so I can move on with that. So now you can see what was a round um, pattern, which was round, uh, which, have we got one here? You can see it. As you can see, it was round. We're now making this pattern travel by cleverly adapting the pattern. There is like a strange little bit of um, here, just here, I'm gonna, I've taken a bit of an edge. It's kind of where the background color meets. I'm just gonna pop that there because there's a similar color there and I'm gonna add that to there and it, it all blend that little pattern away. There's probably another little bit here that I've kind of missed, a little bit of green. You could do this with paint. So it just dis distorts, or not even distorts, but hides the anomalies that make it look like it blends. Right. I've already kind of, that's it. I'm getting all stick, sticky here. Right, I'm gonna add this little bit of ivy to the pattern. I think I'm just gonna randomly go over from here, um, take some of that out, move this so it looks nice and crisp again. And I'm gonna risk it for a biscuit, just out of speed. Because we're gonna be here all day. We're just gonna add the glue and just plonk it in. Um, you would take more time over this and think about it. If you've got your clean wrap over the top, again, you can place, you can work out where it looks good. I'm gonna kinda go here, I think. From that leaf, down from there. And then tap, 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 gently does it. Spreading it around there, like so. And then I'm gonna go back for some more clean wrap over the whole thing. And it means that now I can concentrate on that area, pushing into the grooves, blending it into itself. Now, where it's overlapped, where the white goes over the, the dark, once we um, over finish this with another layer of glue, which we'll talk about in a moment, just get this on, that will vanish. So the last bits, just make sure 
Don't worry about any of the, the funny edges. You can take a piece, once this has been um, treated on the top, you can take a sand, piece of sandpaper and remove them. They'll just come straight off with sandpaper. Um, so leave them overhanging for a while. And of course, if you've got any patches, you can move them along. Right, that's me. Let's peel off, we can see what we've got. I'll give you a closer up view. So there you go. So it's all about creating your own pattern. Now it looks nothing like the pattern that we started off with. It's going off in its own little way. So like I said, any of these edges here, you can take some of these and fill them in. You can, you know, add bits to as you go along if you've got a bit missing. Overhang them and then you can file this way with a nail file or a piece of uh, sandpaper at the end and you'll get a really crisp line. So that's another little technique. Just go on a 45 degree angle and take them off. But that won't come until this is dried. So you need to, once you finish your pattern, I would probably add more pattern up here. So I'm gonna add more pattern and kind of leave a river going through of the paintwork there. Once this, this layer is dried, and it will take probably about a good half an hour for it to be completely dry, you'll know because the glue will go translucent and it will not be sticky anymore. Um, and once you finish the whole area, all I would do then would be to take um, the craft glue again, and I like to cover the whole thing. Not just the decoupage, I do the whole door. Um, if you're only doing the doors of a piece of furniture, then just do the door. Don't worry about the, uh, the carcass of the piece of furniture, that's fine. It can stay as chalk paint, because I'm gonna wax as well for, for the end results. You wouldn't do it this soon, because you can still, I mean, I've got a very soft brush, but if you've got a bristly brush, it could quite possibly rip through your hard work. So I'm just gonna take it gently and just go over, it will go um, opaque for a little while and you'll think, oh, spoilt it, but it comes translucent and it will come out beautifully. It will come out really smooth and gorgeous. Um, sometimes I add a little bit, again, I shouldn't be really doing this at this point, but especially when I'm covering the center area of here with the glue, I add a little bit of my um, atomizer my spray of water just to allow this to have a bit more free movement um, and it's not as thick the glue I suppose I suppose it's it, it's watering it down but in a very fine way um, you don't want it to be too runny because then it's not going to have all the qualities it, it needs to keep it um, adhered to the surface so that is about where we have it. I'm going to flip to the other camera again just so you can see in the other light because I don't know that this light's very good um, how that looks. So let me just flip you over. Here we go. Let's see if we can get a better visual. Here you go. It's a lot shinier. You'll see there's a few little crinkles in this and that is because oops, I have put wet straight on wet. Um, if you allow that first layer to dry, you won't get those little crinkles. Can you see? I don't know if you can see them. There's a few little crinkles, but I never worry about the crinkles. For me, the crinkles are what make this really beautiful because we're going to do some paint finishes over the top and those crinkles are going to pick up on the paint finish. So um, some of the other techniques that we learned, we might do a bit of dry brushing over the top of it. So that's where it needs to be. You need to leave this to dry good and proper. I think I've already pre-prepped another board. So we'll take a look at that board. It's on the other side of the workshop. I'm gonna move this out of the way and we'll have a look at the other board and show you where you could take it to. One moment. Not very organized here today. Um, this is dry, good and proper. So here you go. That's what you could end up with. Which way around is it? That way. Given a, a bit of time spent, that's what you'll end up with. Um, really beautiful. And this has all been sealed in, so it's really soft and silky now. 
Again, I'll clean up a little bit and we'll, we'll get some of this gone and then we'll flip to the other camera. Let's move some of these out of the way. We don't need them now. Um, pop them all there. And we'll just finish this off um, with a little bit of paint. We might even take it to dark, dark wax. We'll get the hairdryer and move it to, to the dark wax. So move these all out of the way. And we'll flip you to the overhead again. So yeah, you can see now in all of its glory, it's it really is stunning. And, and you might want to leave it just there, just apply some wax and finish it. I do really like the colours as vibrant as this and, and as crisp, really, you can see. There you go, that's where I've added a whole other branch of ivy. I've added this element from that side and flipped it to there. Another ivy to there. Same thing here, we've kept even the little scarab beetle there, which was from another napkin, that's been applied. And a little bit of ivy there. So you can see the difference, how you can build your own pattern in a very beautiful way. Um, this pattern is in my tutorial, my vintage faded florals tutorial. Um, and it is pretty much this sort of technique, which you'll learn within that tutorial if you do purchase it, if you want to take your skills to another level. There is a couple of other things that lies within that tutorial on my online academy. One of which is contour blending and that is shading to an aperture of the door, which looks amazing. If you want to do some shading and some ombreing on the surface of your door prior to decoupage. And the other thing is we've mixed it up with a little bit of faded grandeur, so there's some fly speck in there. Um, and then there's one thing that I'm not going to tell any of you on here. I just think you need to go there and find it and see how you can change this. And the, the, the clue is in the title, Vintage Faded Florals, the faded florals part. Um, I'm going to show you how to fade these in, but there's another thing that's hidden in there. And I think it's just sublime. And if you're not an artist, you become an artist in that tutorial. So if anybody wants to use that, let's move some of this out of the way, you can, um, oops, paint everywhere, um, go, go ahead and give it a go. Um, I need to find some cloth, one minute. Um, yeah, definitely do take a look out for that. One of my favorite tutorials, there's so much in it. Um, so much value built into that, that tutorial, so please do give it a try. And of course, if you buy two, you come into the Academy group. I've only just put this here because that's all I've got at the minute. Um, I'm going to show you another way of blending. So dry brushing, we've done this before. We did it in studio session number two, I think. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going back and I'm taking, offloading the paint. And I'm just applying, this is not the bestest brush in the world. Um, through the center of this, I'm taking, it looks a little bit strange, but I'm just get, getting some paint on, any one way I suppose, swirling it around. The brush is quite dry. It will kind of bring it back to a matte finish almost. Um, and this will also tidy up any of the blemishes that you might have got. Sometimes you get like here, I've got a little bit of an anomaly there where I scraped some of the, uh, the napkin off by mistake. Um, and that will just kind of soften. And you see what's happened to that rose? I don't know if you can see that on camera. I've just overlapped it a little bit and it's kind of gone a little bit into the background. So this is what I'm, I'm not gonna do all of it. Um, but I might get a bit heavy handed just so you can see what I mean by blending in. So I'm using a sort of a swirly motion. This is a natural fibred um, brush. It's not um, synthetic. And I'm just softening that one edge sort of here and here. So I'm opening up this pattern with a little bit of blending. So when we talked about the crinkles a moment ago, it is kind of just picking up the crinkles, so um, which looks really gorgeous. And if you've got any more of an edge, because the napkin was cream and this is kind of a grey cream, it's kind of softening that edge in. And you can be a little bit, you know, 
blending in. It is a kind of a blending technique, I suppose. But this is just pushing everything into the background. It's kind of making it look a little bit more smoky, ephemeral. You can kind of go like this. Soft, softens everything up. So this is a lovely way. This is in vintage faded florals. You can see some of this, but again, like I said, there's this hidden, glorious hidden technique somewhere in there. Right, the other thing that we could do for this, and if this, let's just say this was a potty cupboard or um, a bedside, um, and this was only one space in the middle, what I would like to do to then blend into the carcass of the piece of furniture, because you'd have sides to this, is again, back to dry brushing. Studio Chester number, number two, remember, we're picking up some of these techniques and we're overlaying lots of different techniques, which you've been learning along the way. And all I'm gonna do is on this leading edge is dry brush the edge. I'm gonna be quite heavy about this. Um, just to kind of vanish the pattern away. 45 degree angle, quick, quick, quick. And we've kind of been heavy with the paint. And I'm just picking up on that also, that little line there, but I'm not going too far into the pattern. We're gonna do the other side as well, add a bit there. And it's a real nice way of blending back in. Like, especially like here, let me show you. I don't know if you can see that. My decoupage, I didn't do it right to the edge. I didn't pick all away those bits and add them to it because I knew that I was gonna be doing this. What I can do now is blend that in. So I'm kind of hiding it, but dry brushing it. So it's giving it an, a little bit of a border. Remember, you can take these edges off with the nail file. This board was actually painted on in many of the other studio sessions. So last week it was in dark wax. Um, before that it was in um, frottage. So you've seen this board being repainted. It's kind of rough around the edges anyway. So it's had layer and layer and layer of different projects which you've seen along the way, like so. So now that's kind of distressing from the corner. It's almost like distressing it and giving it a softer, more molded look. So it's molded into the surface. We'll do this side. There's some dark colors on this side. Um, Here we go. There's some darker colours on this side. Battery's running low, guys. I'm really sorry if it cuts out. Um, just do this quickly, and then we'll move on to some waxing. If I can get that in before it all charge, the charge dies. I don't want the camera to die on us, so I'm gonna call it a day on that. So let me just show you closer. Can you see that? So it's blending in. I would probably go a bit further with that and soften. You could even go over this edge, look, just on the corners. It actually pushes the napkin further in, so it looks like it's been distressed. And then you can add some dark wax, which we're gonna do. So let's just give a quick waz with a hairdryer. I'm just gonna flip you back. And this is how it should look, close up, in a better light. Let's show you. Say better, yeah, that's better. If I show you that. So you can still see some shiny areas. That's where I didn't hit it with the paint. Um, but that's not gonna matter. We're gonna do the, uh, the clear and dark wax and that should sort all of those things out. But you can just kind of see how it's just softened. It's even picked up that little lip there. So I'm super happy with that. Let's go with um, some clear, clear wax. 
um, and some dark wax. What do we need? Dark wax, clear wax. And put that out of the way. So I'm going to use just a normal uh, chip brush for this, just just out of ease and speed. All of my other uh, wax brushes are in a pot waiting to be cleaned, reconditioned. Um, so all we're going to do is just literally, as you would, wax it exactly the same way. If you're using short paint, it's no different to any other way. Did we bring a cloth with me? Yeah, there's the cloth. So I'm going to quickly go over this. And you'll find that it really pushes the whole pattern right into the piece of furniture. In this case, the cupboard door. Um, and it takes that real shine off it. The wax will take that real shine off if you've missed any areas with the paint. Like I said, it'll take that shiny, shiny edge off. And all I'm going to do is add dark wax to that aperture. Just to show you what you can do. You don't have to. This is all choice. All choice. Um, I'm making sure I've got plenty on so it doesn't grab to the chalk paint. Um, let's take excess off. Nice piece of cotton cloth. We don't normally get to the point of waxing. Um, I like to show the techniques, but of course, just to finish this off, to see that final part of the whole thing, in context, we're going to use wax. So, any if you've watched all of the other studio sessions, um, and you wonder why I've not taken it to the end, it's just because I want them to be as short as possible and give you the technique. But with this one, I want you to see it right through to the end. Again, that's good. Let's flip you around. And that's it. So, ready to receive dark wax. Today I'm gonna to use a rather old tin of Authentico dark wax because it's softer than Annie's dark wax. Um, and that's what I'm going for, a softer look. You can, I'll pop this into, I'm gonna be heavy handed with it. I'm just gonna go into all of that detail. The difference with this wax, it's much more, um, I don't know, free and loose compared to Annie. So there's, there's difference in all products. Um, you all know me very well for Annie's products, but I do, every now and again, I'll use something that is slightly different. And I really love this for a softer finish. I'm just pushing into all the details. Most of it's gonna come back off, um, like so. And then it's just a little bit more ochre this this dark wax than Annie's dark wax and I quite like that look I didn't want it to be too heavy because you can kill it you can literally kill it with too much dark wax and I just wanted it to be a soft subtle look um, and I will just add some to the here and here just so it's got some definition. No rhyme or reason again. I'm just using a small um, paintbrush. Like that. Softening. And like I said, if you added textures to this, it would look hell of a lot different again. But I'm keeping it quite crisp for you. Um, and I think that's it. Just simple as that. Maybe we'll add a bit more down here. Just fill that corner. There's no real pattern in this corner or this one. Like so. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, that's softened then. Just subtly does it. It's all about disguising any edges. And that's it. I give you a close up. Um, very subtle. So that's one way of blending all of your decoupage in. Um, I'm going to leave it there. I hope 
you enjoyed today's studio session. Um, thank you for joining me. I normally end on the other camera, but I'm not. I'm going to do it this way. It's kind of flattering. Um, lovely to see you all. Um, and thank you for joining. I know it was a long one. The next one, I'm going to think, I think I'm going to talk about um, colours and colour mixes. We're going to go back to Annie products and talk about colour mixes and faded grandeur colour mixes, maybe. I think that might be kind of nice. Well, anyway, thank you for joining me this week. I will see you next week. Um, look forward to seeing you all. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.